Good morning and welcome to our second video worship service here at Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ. Am I on here? I'm on now. Welcome to our second worship service here at Yorkville Congregational United Church of Christ that we are broadcasting over the internet in the midst of our uh, shut down and shut in time. This morning um, we will be um, going through several of the psalms, one of which is our call to worship this morning. We lift up our eyes to the hills, from where will our help come? Our help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He who keeps us will not slumber. The Lord is our keeper. The Lord is the shade at our right hands. The sun shall not strike us by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep us from all evil. The Lord will keep our lives. The Lord will keep our being safe and are staying in for the right amount of time and will guide us together again when it is safe. Amen. Gracious God, keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low. You who taught us to love our neighbor and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. For we know that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Traditionally, this is the time when we pass the peace to one another and greet each other with the words, Peace of Christ be with you. So this morning, I want to greet you all out there with the words, The peace of Christ be with you, today and in the week to come. A few announcements. We weren't going to do announcements in these services, but there is a one that's important, I think. Um, the newsletter has been completed and been mailed out, and this week on Tuesday and Wednesday, we will have the vestibule open for those who would like to come in and pick up a printed copy of the email, of the newsletter. Otherwise, it's been emailed out to everybody and it will be available on the church website. So um, you can go to any one of those locations and um, get the April newsletter. And it's, surprisingly, a full one. Last week in our first internet service, I reminded you that one of the things that we can do when we come together, even when we are not in each other's physical presence, is to pray. We pray not just because we believe that prayer changes things, but because prayer also changes us. It makes us less fearful, and fills us with the peace of Christ, that peace that surpasses all understanding. But it also makes us less angry and more compassionate. So let us join our hearts together as we pray for our world, our nation, our communities, and our lives. Today we want to lift up all those who are working on the medical front, lines making do with inadequate supplies and masks and other important equipment like respirators and all those making difficult decisions brought on by this difficult time we want to lift up all those who are ill or who are become to become ill whether with the covid 19 virus or some other virus like the flu or cold we want to lift up all those who have lost loved ones like regina mo whose sister carlene passed away this week on friday and we want to add also with that, we want to add Carlin's children to our prayers. We also want to lift up all those businesses and all those whose livelihoods are being adversely affected by the measures our country must take 
people like Parker and Jennifer Trumbull who were furloughed this past week. But we also want to celebrate the strong, the wise and careful leaders and medical advisors who are staying the course on social distancing, on staying home and staying safe. So let us come and let us now be together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we gather our hearts, hearts together in prayer in this time when we cannot gather together physically. We turn to you and rely on you to help us, to guide us, and to give us strength during this trying time. Give us a spirit of kindness and help us to think about our neighbors, how we can help them and how we can allow them to help us. Into our anxiety, so peace. Into our fear, so courage. Into our confusion, so wisdom. We pray for all those who are experiencing illness of any kind. Heal their bodies and strengthen their spirits. Protect all those affected by the COVID-19 virus. Keep them safe and help them to get well. Be with the nurses and the doctors, the surgeons and the scientists and paramedics as they seek to care for people in numbers that are beginning to be overwhelming. Guide their diagnosis and treatments and keep them strong themselves. Help all caregivers to be renewed and to get the rest they need to continue to serve as they are needed to serve. We pray for those who are most vulnerable in this world. Help us to connect with them in ways that are safe for all. In the midst of this crisis, help us to find joy and laughter to share with one another. Holy God, we pray for all the leaders of our nation and of our world. Fill them with a spirit of wisdom and courage that they may lead rightly, driven by compassion for all people. Give them clarity and soften them with humility, as we know that no human being is infallible and all people need your grace. Make us faithful stewards of all the resources you've given and help us to resist taking more than our fair share. Fill us with a spirit of generosity and trust in you, that we may be free of fear and filled with your spirit of abundance and enough. Be with all churches so that even as we worship in separate places and at different times, we feel connected through you and your love, one human family. Help us to be the body of Christ, loving and serving the world and all people that you have created. And now in our different places, we join our voices with the voice of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Since you all are not present here this morning, we will not be actually collecting an offering, just as we did not collect one last week. But as a reminder, our church does still have bills to pay and a building to maintain and ministries to support. We know that the e-givers will be continuing to give throughout this time of lockdown, but if you are not an e-giver, please consider mailing your weekly, weekly contribution to the church when our worship time ends. God does not withhold God's gifts and blessings from us just because we don't enter the church building. So let us not hold back our gifts and our offerings to God. Mm -hmm. dedicate to God all that we bring to God in terms of our time, our love, our talents, and our treasures. Let's pray. Take what we bring to you, O oh God, and use it for your work. Take our gifts to fund ministry and mission. Take our hearts that our love for others might transform their lives. Take our hands that we might do things that make a real difference in your world during this difficult time. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 27. 
verses 1 to 5, 8 to 10, and 13 to 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek ever after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in the shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, and be gracious to me, and answer me. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. The Word of God for the people of God. In his book, The Eye of the Storm, Max Lucado told this story. While traveling, I was reading the local newspaper and came across this traumatic story. Chippy the Canary was sitting quietly on his perch, enjoying the sunlight coming through the window just outside his cage, when his owner began to clean Chippy's cage with a vacuum cleaner. Just then, the phone rang. She turned to pick it up and barely had said hello when, swoop, Chippy got sucked in. Chippy's owner gasped and put down the phone, turned off the vacuum and opened the bag. There was Chippy, still alive but stunned and covered with dust and crumbs and other debris. Frantic, Chippy's owner grabbed him and raced to the bathroom, turned on the faucet and held Chippy under the running water. Then, realizing that Chippy was soaked and shivering, she did the thing that any compassionate bird owner would do. She reached for the hair dryer and blasted Chippy with hot air. Poor Chippy never knew what hit him. At the end of the article, the reporter wrote that he had contacted Chippy's owner a few days after the trauma just to see how the bird was recovering. Well, Chippy's owner said, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stares. Lakata goes on and says, it's not hard to see why Chippy behaved that way. Being sucked in, washed out, and blown over is enough to steal the song from even the strongest hearts. The last few weeks, many people in our country, in our state, in our community, and even in our church are feeling like they've been sucked in, washed out, and blown over. Being in this state of economic shutdown and social shut-in has made many people feel like the song is being stolen from their hearts. So what better place to turn to try to get the song in our hearts back than to the Book of Psalms? The Book of Psalms contains all kinds of songs, songs that are prayers to God, songs of lament, songs of praise to God for God's help and God's presence, songs about God's goodness, songs of hope in God. Reading and praying the Psalms puts us in touch with the deep parts of ourselves and with the God who walks beside us and touches those deep places with God's love and grace in good times and in bad. So I hope that the Psalms I have used for this service today will help you walk away with renewed trust, renewed hope, and with a heart that can again sing for joy even in these trying times. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 121. Psalm 121 is a good place to go to find encouragement in times like these. The first verse is, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? When the world grows dark and your journey grows rugged, where do you look for help? Where do you turn to gain the confidence that you need to face being shut down and shut in and to help you recover from being sucked in, washed out, and blown over?
Psalm 121, 121 reminds us that in good times and especially in tough times, God is always the one we can turn to for help. That is, for strength, for peace, for courage, for patience, and for hope. God, the one who made heaven and earth, the one who created us, is our one true help. In the culture of the ancient Hebrews, the action of lifting one's eyes implied looking at something longingly or with desire, rather than looking at something with dread. As I walked my dogs this past week, I noticed that a lot of the people that I was seeing that were out walking around in my neighborhood were doing so with their heads down. Perhaps they were just trying to practice good social distancing by not making eye contact with anyone. But with the fear we've seen played out in the last few weeks in the media and in our stores, with people organized and, hoarding, and, and organizations hoarding supplies, it's pretty likely that many of the folks that I've seen this past week are feeling a sense of fear and dread. Lifting their eyes, noticing the beauty of nature, the wonder of God's creation, could remind them, and us too, that God is present here and everywhere. So one thing we can all do to get through the days ahead, a lesson that we can take from Psalm 121, is to lift our eyes and look to the hills, and to the trees, and to the sky, because looking at what God created reminds us that God is with us and always ready and able to overcome the fear and the dread that dampens our spirits. Moving on through the rest of the psalm, we heard the words watch and keep repeated several times. The verb in the original Hebrew is shamar, which can mean to guard or to protect or to watch. The psalmist knows that God never slumbers, but watches over us day and night. And the watchful care of God is not limited to passive observation. God watches over God's people by protecting our spirits and our souls, shading us from evil within and without. Psalm 27, our scripture reading for today, a psalm attributed to David, sounds the same note. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The stronghold, stronghold being like a fortress. So protection, the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I fear? Though an army camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though an army camp against me, my heart shall not fear. Sure, we have an army camp against us, an army of virus. And sure, we are all going to have to face whatever it is that we are facing when we end the service. But knowing that God is with us can overcome our fear and give us peace. The war rises up against me. And this battle with the COVID-19 virus has already been classified as a war. Though a war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. Now this is not about being confident that I won't get the COVID-19 virus, or that it will miraculously go away. It doesn't mean that you and I and everyone else won't suffer economic and financial hardships, or that all of our lives will be unchanged by all of this. No, this is about being confident that whatever comes, whatever happens, we can trust that God is with us, that God is watching over us, that even if our loved ones forsake us, even if our parents abandon us, God will never forsake or abandon us because God loves us with a love that is beyond even our understanding. Then David writes, Now my head is lifted up, now my head is up, which means my eyes are up, and I'm able to see the evidence of God's presence with me. I am, you are, lifted above the fray, above the enemies that long to take us down, enemies like the evil that leads to hoarding and profiteering, enemies like the fear and the dread that wants to overwhelm our souls in times like this. When we lift our eyes, to God, God lifts our spirits 
and we're given the strength and the wisdom and the hope that we need to resist our enemies within and without. And notice what David proclaims that he will do next in Psalm 27. I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. In the midst of the trials he faced, in the midst of his own war, his own battle with enemies within and without, King Saul was after him at this point, David made sacrifices for God, and we can probably assume he made sacrifices for God's people, too. And he did so with joy and with songs of praise. In the midst of all this, we have watched many people making sacrifices, sacrifices for our world and for God's people, healthcare workers, people working in the food supply chain, first responders, and many others. And most of them are, most are doing it with great joy, believe it or not. When I went to the Jewel yesterday morning, I was greeted with a smile and a cheerful, good morning, how are you today? by the woman who was the checkout person. We had a very brief but positive conversation about what it's like to be working through all this. We too can work through this with joy, with joyful hearts that still can give thanks and praise to God for God's goodness. The last two verses that David writes in this psalm are amazing statements of trust and hope. First he writes, I believe I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the midst of his trials, in the midst of threats of death, David's faith proclaims that because God is his help, our help, because God watches over us and is always with us, because God hides us in his shelter in the days of trouble, David trusted and we can too that we will see God's goodness in the land of the living, now and in the future. Just how God's goodness will be revealed, how it will be seen by us, I cannot tell you. But I can tell you that if you walk around with your head down in fear and dread, you're probably going to miss it. It may come in the warm smile of a stranger or in the cheerful greeting of a checkout person at the Jewel, or in the humor someone sent you in an email, or in the kindness of a neighbor who went out so that you could stay in. To see the goodness of the Lord in our land, in your life today and every day going forward, you need to lift up your eyes to the hills, to the trees, to the faces of those all around you. For the goodness of God is there in every act of kindness, in every loving word spoken, in every smile, in every ray of sunlight, in every crocus and tulip and daffodil bud that is pushing its way up through the soil. David's final verse in this psalm is this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. My dad was a man of deep faith. And as I mentioned before in a sermon, Whenever we ran into hard times in our business or in our family, my dad would always say, God didn't bring us this far to drop us in the grease now. We will be okay. God will get us through. And you know, I believed that then, and I still believe it now. God will see us through. We may have to wait a bit. We may have to be patient. But take courage. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living.
And now lift up your eyes and be confident that the God who loves you, the Christ who redeemed you, and the Holy Spirit who empowers you, go with you every day, and they will see you through these difficult times. Go in love. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.